This was a very interesting thing to watch. We'll take a look at it. Kamala Harris sat down for her first interview after the debate. I'm supported by the former Vice President Dick Cheney, former Congress member Liz Cheney. Look, we don't have enough housing in America. We have a housing supply shortage. Because we have millions of people who shouldn't be here. The American dream is elusive. It's just actually not attainable. So part of because my of you. Is, yeah. In my heart, I know. In my soul, I know. That in your the brain. The majority of us as Americans have so much more in common than what separates us. It's a little bit rough. Kamala Harris sat down for her first interview after the debate, and she came alone. She didn't bring her emotional support governor with her to have this conversation with this local news fella, and it was rough. This was a very interesting thing to watch. We'll take a look at it. This was an interview with Brian Taft. He was there in Philadelphia, local news, 6ABC. She's trying to get out there and do more interviews because she realizes that that debate isn't moving the needle in quite the way that they need to move it. And so they got to do something else about this. Came out immediately. We want another debate. Trump said, no, not going to do that. Of course, not going to do another dogpile three on one with your BFF and your sorority sister. And so now she's out trying to have a conversation and the Trump people are just loving it. So Trump's war room on X posted this. Our newest ad just dropped. Guess what it is? Her interview. It's the same interview. It's not even an ad. Get it? All right. So we'll listen to it, but it's a little bit rough. And as we're going through it, I want us to pay attention to these facial features of the Democrats historic candidate and when you zoom in on this we'll go we'll watch this as we kind of go through it but watch and listen says still boneless as she subconsciously swallows after touting her Cheney endorsement I can't believe she's using this as a selling point I'm supported by the former vice president Dick Cheney former Congress member Liz Cheney rough okay so even she knows that's a hard one to swallow and kamala has experience in that arena so here is the interview let's listen through this and see how she sounds and i want to draw attention to this very first answer because it's the same answer that she gave at the debate she is just a scripted fake persona and you can see it on full display here madam vice president pleasure to meet you thanks Good for your to time today you, our audience appreciates your time as well. of course as you know, we're sitting here in a state and arguably in front of an audience that 54 days from now could decide the outcome of this presidential election. You hear it more than I do. People want to know more about you and about your specific plans. At the debate the other night, you talked about creating an opportunity economy. Mm -hmm. I wonder if we can drill down on that a little bit. When we talk about bringing down prices and making life more affordable for people, what are one or two specific things you have in mind for that? Well, I'll start with this. I grew up a middle class kid. Same answer my she gave at the debate. Raised my sister and me. She worked very hard. She was able to finally save up enough money to buy our first house when I was a teenager. I grew up in a community of hardworking people, you know, construction workers and nurses and teachers. And I try to explain to some people who may not have had the same experience, you know, but a lot of people will relate to this. All right, so no I grew answer. Up in a neighborhood of folks who were very proud of their lawn, you know? And, um, and I was raised to believe and to know that all people deserve dignity. And that we as Americans have a beautiful character. You know, we have ambitions and aspirations. Okay, so she said nothing. Not it's been about a minute. necessarily has access to the resources Specifics. that can help them fuel those dreams and ambitions. Specifics. So when I talk about building an opportunity economy, it is very much with the mind of investing in the ambitions and aspirations and the, and the incredible work ethic of the American people and creating opportunity for people, for example, to start a small business. That you closed? Um, my mother, you know, worked long hours and our neighbor helped raise us. We used to call her, it was, I still call her, our second mother. She was a small business owner. I love our small business owners. I learned who they are from my childhood. No, you don't. she was... You mandated that they do certain things or they closed. You and all of the rest of the Democrat and the security state demanded lockdowns and closures and mandates in order to reopen and winter of misery and death and all the things so that it could be extracting wealth from the middle class and then aggregating it 
into the political elite. A, a community leader, she hired locally, she mentored. Our small businesses are so much a part of the fabric of our communities, not to mention, really, I think the backbone of America's economy. So my opportunity economy okay. plan includes giving startups a $50,000 tax deduction to start their small business. It used to be $5,000. Nobody can start a small business with $5,000. Okay, so just to be clear on what she's doing, it's not a new idea, so it's a current idea, $5,000 dollar deduction already exists consult your cpa okay we'll take her word for it and then they're going to increase that just add a zero to that so it's not a new idea they're just going to add a zero to that and it's just a deduction okay so once you spend money you can take that as a deduction to reduce your tax liability so they're not giving you five thousand dollars anybody to start a business right here she flips it nobody can start a business with five thousand dollars okay well that's a deduction you don't get five thousand dollars you have to go pay you have to go pay out of pocket to start your business and then when you file your taxes then you can deduct five thousand dollars off that and that can impact your liability what your total tax obligations are so if that's the argument so it just means look i'm all for no taxes and i'm all for deductions i'd rather have no taxes at all but Okay, so she just increases that, but you still have to come out of pocket. But then she rephrases this as no one can start a business with that with 5,000 as though she's going to be giving you $50,000 to go start a business. That's not what her plan says. So it's a false argument. She's just perverting right in the middle here. But investing in people's innovative ideas and giving them the ability to go for it. Opportunity economy means, look, we don't have enough housing in America. We have a housing supply shortage. Because we have millions of people who shouldn't be here. In particular for so many younger Americans, the American dream is elusive. It's just actually not attainable. So part because of my plan is to work with the private sector and housing developers to give them a tax credit, to be able to partner with us as the government, to build, and my goal is, 3 million new homes by the end of my first term. In addition, to help people who just want to get their foot in the door, literally, and and so giving first time home buyers a $25,000 down payment assistance to be able to just get in the door and then they will do the work that they need to do to save and to pay that mortgage and to build wealth for themselves and their family. These are some examples of what I mean when I talk about an opportunity economy, and a lot of it has to do with just the community I was raised in and the people I admired who work hard, you know, and deserve to have, you know, their dreams fulfilled. Okay, so tax credits. Two already existing ideas. She's just going to make sure you come out of pocket, right? Originally, was she was going to give you some money on that down payment. Now she's going to increase the tax deduction. So you still have to come out of pocket, but you're just going to save a little money on the tax obligation and your tax liabilities, which I'm all for, by the way. I hate taxes. I think they're destructive and at previous appearances about turning the page on the past. And in fact, here today in Johnstown, you're talking about a new way forward. I think some people have a question, given maybe your current role as Vice President of the United States, how different you are from Joe Biden. And so I wonder if there are one or two spots policy areas or approaches where you would say, I'm a different person. Okay, give us some specifics, well, Kamala. Not Joe Biden. You know, I, I offer a new Barely. generation of leadership. And so, for example, thinking about developing and creating an opportunity economy. Again? It's about investing in areas that really need a lot of work and maybe focusing on again the aspirations and the dreams but also just recognizing that at this moment in time some of the stuff we could take for granted years ago we can't take for granted anymore for example you mean like in 2020 plan that i have that is a new approach is to expand the child tax credit to six thousand dollars for young families for the first year of their child's life so again did you hear what she said this is a new approach but we're going to expand the child tax credits. So it's not really a new anything. Why is she recognizing how destructive taxes are? Maybe she should get rid of them entirely. Because that is obviously a very critical stage of development of a child. And a lot of young parents need the help to buy a car seat or a crib or clothes for their kids. And so my approach is about new ideas. So she's not going to give, this is for so such low information voters, right? For her side, her constituents, they hear the number $6,000. They go, oh my gosh, 
if we have a baby, we're going to get $6,000. No, they're not going to cut you a check for $6,000. You have to spend money. And then when you're filing your taxes, you say, I can claim this deduction because I had a baby this year in the interest of $6,000, whatever that is. And you you're still got to pay money. You're not getting free money to have kids. New policies that are directed at the current moment. And also to be very honest with you, my focus is very much in what we need to do over the next 10, 20 years to catch up to the 21st century around, again, capacity, but also challenges. Crime and public safety are- He's like, oh gosh, the hell did she just say? Major issues. Uh, right at the forefront of voters' minds in Philadelphia as well, where crime is a significant issue. When we talk about crime, the conversation turns to gun safety as well. And I think you actually probably caught a lot of people off guard, maybe a bit by surprise in the debate the other night when you mentioned that you are a gun owner. I know you said it in 2019 as well. Mm -hmm. I want to talk about your values on this yeah. issue. When it comes to gun ownership, where do you draw the line in America on gun ownership and gun use? Well, like you said, Brian, I am a gun owner and Tim Walls, my running mate, is also a gun owner. We're not taking anybody's guns away. Yeah, right. I support the Second Amendment and I support reasonable gun safety laws. Part of my approach to this is I was a career prosecutor for most of my career. I have personally prosecuted homicide cases. I have personally looked at autopsies. I have personally this is so seen dumb. what assault weapons do to the human body. Okay. And so I feel very strongly that it is consistent with the Second Amendment and your right to own a gun to also say we need an assault weapons ban. They're literally tools of war. Oh, my brain They're just literally... lost 15 IQ points. Hold on. Oh, do you see that facial expression? Just lost 15 IQ points. They'll come back, but it's just like a temporary. It's like when you get phased in a video game, like, you know, you're just like, okay, it'll come back. Designed to kill a lot of human beings quickly. I say we need universal background checks. The majority of NRA members support that. Why? Because it's just reasonable. You just might want to know before someone can buy a lethal <laughs> weapon if they've been found by a court to be a danger to themselves or others. You just might want to know. Two final questions, if I might. Sure. On the appeal of the man you were running against, as you drove here today, you likely saw a lot of Trump signs. More he than has you. an historic appeal. Yeah, more than your signs. Country. And as you are someone running against him and trying to understand that, I wonder how you distill it. What do you understand his appeal to be? And how do you speak to his voters or maybe people who just share his values but are open to something else? I, based on experience and uh, Come on. Lived experience. No. Yeah. In my heart, I know. In my soul, I know. That in your the vast brain? The majority of us as Americans have so much more in common than what separates us. And I Well, then why do you categorize everybody according to their race, gender, genitals, socioeconomic status, religion? Why do you do that if we're all in this together in the interest of freedom and prosperity for all? I also believe that I am accurate in knowing that most Americans want a leader who brings us together as Americans and not not someone who professes to be a leader who is trying to have us point our fingers at each other. He's not. You guys are indicting him and prosecuting him. Approach, to be honest with you. He's brought RFK Jr. on, who is a lifelong Democrat. He brought Tulsi Gabbard on, who's a lifelong Democrat. Many more are joining the fray. What are you talking about? It's the most unified campaign and ticket in modern American history. Are you kidding? I think people want a leader who has common sense and tries to find common ground. I'm supported by over 200 Republicans who worked for both Presidents Bush, yeah. John McCain, and Mitt Romney. I'm supported by War parties. former Vice President Dick Cheney, former Congress member Liz Cheney. War. And I think people are more Gulp. willing now, in light of the the hate and division that we see coming out of Donald Trump, to say, hey, let's put country first. And I think that just makes us stronger and more healthy as a country to say, look, we will we can all debate our differences around, you know, various policies. Border but war. Let's stop with the division, like enough of that. Let's Inflation. Put together. And finally, as you introduce yourself to America. She is talking about unity when she's visiting anti-Republican spice shops, stuff like that. In a new way, they've heard much of your story at the Democratic National Convention in, in that debate earlier this week. If there's one thing that you wish Americans knew about who Kamala Harris is that you don't think they know yet, what would that be? I don't know. I've been probably, it's not very different from anybody watching right now. I love my family. One of my favorite things that I lately have not been able to do is Sunday family dinner. I love to cook. I have incredible friends. My best friend from kindergarten is still my best friend. 
And I said it the other day, you know, as a career prosecutor, I never asked a victim of crime, were they a Republican or a Democrat? What does this have the to The only thing I ever ask them is, are you okay? It's like and right back to programming I think mode. That's See that? The approach that most Americans want, regardless of who they voted for in the last election, um, in terms of turning the page and charting the way forward. I imagine you're looking forward to cooking Sunday dinner again. I am looking forward. I love, I, yes, I am looking forward to cooking. With the whole family gets involved, the kids each have their role. Yeah. Okay, so. <sighs> we made it through. Kamala's interview. She barely made it through that too. And it's pretty interesting. Watching this in the aftermath of the debate makes me think she had every single question on note cards at the debate because it sounded like she was going through a script at the debate. This sounds like there is nobody behind the wheel at all and not even an interesting person. You're like, can you just sit down and just say something interesting like anything? Oh gosh, I've never been asked this before. I don't know. It's the same as everyone. I like to cook with the kids. Is she going to be cooking big meals at the White House? Well, you know, big dinners at the White House or something like that? I don't know. It's very interesting and pretty terrible interview. You can see why Trump and his people are saying, yeah, that's a campaign ad. All we got to do is just keep running that all day long and she'll do the work for us.